Hey guys, thanks for checking out the channel. It's Ryan Evans here again today. And in this video, I'm going to update a video that I had done many years ago. Um, and one of the reasons I felt like I really needed to update this CMA review video is because there's still thousands of people every year that are going out and watching this video. And um, while I think that it definitely has some information that's still relevant and helpful to people, uh, there's some things that have changed a little bit. And um, so I kind of wanted to, you know, touch on a couple of those things. I'm not going to redo everything in that video. It's still something that might be helpful if you want to watch through it, but just know that some of the information is probably outdated. Um, but also in this particular video, I'll speak from the standpoint of being um, a holder of the CMA for going on five years now and just sort of what my experience has been like as an actual CMA. Um, so I hope you guys will stick around and watch this video and hopefully it's helpful for you, uh, particularly for those people that are, you know, just starting to think about whether or not they want to get a CMA, uh, get the CMA or, you know, whether or not you, you know, maybe you're one of those people that has just started and you want to kind of get an idea of what it might be like down the road for you. This definitely might be a video worth watching for you. So like I said before, um, one of the things I know is really important to people is the salary information. And so I'll definitely cover that here, um, along with, um, my journey specifically as a CMA, um, I'm talk a little bit about how the CMA has changed since I did it. Um, I'll talk about some reasons why I really think you should get the CMA. Of course, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of good reasons to do it, but I'll tell you the ones that are really, uh, most important to me. I'll talk about some of the alternatives there are to the CMA and um, specifically this came from just people uh, asking me questions or just talking to people about different things that they thought about when they were considering, you know, uh, improving their, uh, you know, s certification um, or their, their professional uh, credentials, that sort of thing. Uh, another thing I'll talk about is the steps to become a certified management accountant. I'll go into some study tips a little bit and, and review my exam experience to wrap up. Um, so as we get into the salary information, the, the reason I really want to talk about this is because I know it's a, one of the top of top of mind considerations when people start thinking about getting the CMA, I definitely know it was on my mind. Uh, and you really want to know before you go and, and put all this effort in to getting the certification, is it really you know, is it really true? Are you going to be able to get a, a significantly higher salary or my career opportunity is going to be better? That sort of thing. Um, and the answer is absolutely yes, in my opinion and, and in my experience. Um, I'll say that, you know, I know several CMAs personally. Um, obviously, like I said, I'm a CMA myself and six figure salaries are very common for CMAs. Now, <laughs> Unfortunately, in this economy, six figures isn't what it used to be, um, but it is still a, a solid income. So you can expect a pretty strong income, especially as you become more experienced as a CMA. Another thing that's really interesting and of note, this is directly from the IMA's website, and that is that 58% um, on average higher salary for CMAs versus their non-certified peers. And um, about four out of five CMAs report that the certification has really helped with their professional growth. Now, the thing about this bullet point, uh, like I said, this is also coming from the IMA's website. The thing I don't really understand is what the other one in five people are saying. Are they saying that it didn't help their professional growth? Um, because I really think that every CMA that I know would say it definitely helped their professional growth. So I think this should be like a hundred percent of holders personally, but, um, Anyway, like I said, this comes directly from the IMA's website. I know a lot of people report that the CMA uh, specifically helped them to land certain positions and get certain acknowledgement or respect that they don't think they would have otherwise. So I would definitely say um, because of those things, it's going to help you with your professional growth with almost a certainty, in my opinion. And we know that's correlated with higher being able to hi uh, demand higher salary in the market. Um, so just some stuff to keep in mind. Hopefully that's sort of a final answer on the salary question that I get, I've gotten asked a lot over the years. I really do think 
that you will be able to get a very attractive salary and a salary that will, will make you ultimately look back and say, yes, all the uh, work that I went through to get the certified management account designation was very well worth it. I know that's what I say. Uh, so the next thing I'll talk about is my journey as a CMA. Um, so as you saw my uh, certification earlier that I displayed, I became a certified management accountant in December of 2018. I began the uh, study for the, the designation in earlier in that year, and I was fortunate to be able to pass both exams in a six month period. Um, and shortly after becoming a CMA, similar to what I had seen happen to some of my peers, I immediately became a respected uh, leader within finance. And over the years, my advice became highly sought after within the organizations that I worked in. Um, I really felt more respected because I held the CMA and I felt like that my opinion really held weight in, um, you know, in meetings and projects or whatever it was. I felt like that it really, it mattered more um, because people knew that, you know, I had those three letters behind my name. Um, another thing that was, was, within my experience as a, as a CMA so far has been, you know, there's a, I feel like I have a great deal of uh, versatility, um, meaning that, you know, there's a lot of options for me out there as a CMA. I can, there's so many different things I feel like I can do. I've worked primarily within corporate finance at this point in my career and I've loved it. Um, but I feel like that I could do a lot of other things you know, there's a lot of other opportunities for me and I feel like I have job security. And this, this is a really a, a big one because, you know, in my experience over the years, I've seen quite a bit of, uh, friction and disruption within organizations. I've seen massive layoffs. Um, I've seen, you know, just be, because of the economy or whatever it is, disruptions, um, uh, in, in the workforce and that sort of thing and just cutbacks and, I've never really felt like like I had to really worry about my income because, you know, even if worst case scenario, um, a company goes through a situation where it completely shuts down, uh, which I personally have, uh, you know, seen seen a bankruptcy in, in one of the companies that I've worked in. You know, I never was concerned that I wouldn't be able to go to the next thing because CMAs really are really in high demand. And um, so that's that's been a really nice feeling to have. And uh, another thing I'll say that I'm really happy to to have in terms of going back to the salary um, is that I've gotten offers from uh, really strong uh, compensation packages offers regularly over the years, uh, particularly on LinkedIn or recruiters sending emails to my personal mailbox, you know, about um, positions that previous to becoming a CMA, I just I'm not sure I would have gotten those same offers. So it's been it's been something I've really enjoyed um, having uh, for that for that reason. So uh, the next thing I'll talk about is um, how the CMA has changed since I did it, uh, since I went through the program, and I, I really I'm excited to talk about this just because I want to kind of um, brag on the IMA, the sponsoring organization for the CMA. Um, so if you look in the 2018. Um, column for both parts, you will notice the uh, allocation by major portion of the exam at that time. And what you'll see first probably is the 15% change in the technology and analytics uh, section in part one. And I'm so glad that the IMA did this because it really speaks to, um, you know, what, how they sort of manage, um, you know, manage things. And, and it's really smart that they have put this in um, you know, they, they're an organization that they really do their best to support their members and be agile, um, and really stay up to date with what the current business environment is and make sure that their holders and members are, are prepared as well. And so when they did this, uh, like I said, when I, when I took the exam back in 2018, this was not a part of it. Um, but it's been something that's been a huge part of my, my, um, uh, work since then. And so I'll go a little bit deeper into the technology and analytics section of the exam on the next slide. But before I go on to that, I want to just briefly talk about part two, some of the changes that I've seen them make as well. 
Um, you know, they've increased the decision analysis, which I think is really important since that's such a, a big focus for uh, holders. And they have in, in increased professional ethics, which I think is huge as well. Because despite everything that's, you know, happened uh, in the last 20 years within, you know, the profession or related, um, you know, we still have we still have some opportunity out there for, um, you know, for things to uh, not go the, the way they should from an ethical standpoint. And the IMA is really focused on maintaining the integrity um, and the, the image of the credential and I think that's really paramount for us as um, as members and holders because we want we want these uh, you know we want businesses to trust us you know we want we want to have that image of you can trust what we're saying you we can you can trust what we're presenting to you there has to be a, a lot of trust within the profession and for them to uh, increase professional ethics and always maintain that focus on ethics I've really loved that about the IMA um, so I'll go into technology and analytics now. Uh, like I said before, this has been something that's really been huge, particularly within my more recent roles. Uh, not to go too in depth, but in a in um, one of my recent roles, I was in the last two of my recent roles, I should say, I've been really involved in process automation uh, and the integration of innovative applications. Heavy emphasis on business intelligence and data visualization. Um, as we're trying to, you know, analyze the business and provide greater insights to executive leadership. Um, but also back in the, in the top level stuff, this information systems and data governments has been a big part of what, what I've been, uh, you know, team t on teams for, or been responsible for and making sure that, you know, our accounting information systems are integrated correctly and, um, you know, all that sort of thing. So I really love that the IMA is is making this uh, a big part of the exam. They realize there's a demand there for that. There's a need there for that for the holders and members. So I really love that they have, um, you know, made this change. It's it's really it's really a huge thing in my opinion. Um, so in the next the next uh, section, we'll talk a little bit about why um, why I think you might get the CMA. Of course, there's a lot of reasons, a lot of good reasons beyond what I'm going to talk about, but I try to be pretty thorough here. The first thing that always comes to mind when I think about, when I'm trying to explain to somebody why you might want to get the CMA, um, is that when you get the CMA, um, you know, it's w one reason to get it versus some other certification I'd say is that the CMA is actually pretty difficult. It was probably one of the more difficult things I'd say I've done in my life. Um, and it is so, it's such a valuable thing. And it's becoming, you know, more uh, recognized and well known. People are starting to see the value more and more. And, um, you know, it's really difficult to get. Like I said, I've seen people that have tried to go and get the the um, certification, and you know, took an exam, and and it just kind of was too tough for them. Couldn't get through it, and they stopped. And honestly, what I would say to those people is to push through. Like I tell everybody, it's a, you know, it's a it's a test of commitment, but as sad as that is, um, it's actually a good thing for holders because it shows you like, it, it shows people out there. This is, this is not something that's easy to get. I know when I was taking it, the, the, um, pass rates were, were pretty low, um, lower than the CPA, I would say from what I, what I recall. So it's a pretty tough exam and that actually makes it more valuable when it's more difficult for people to get. Um, another thing, another thing is, you know, the CMA is specialized. Uh, and so, relatively speaking, I should say. And, uh, so that makes it, that makes it a really, um, you know, good thing to have because you're, you're saying, I, I really know this specific area, right? Um, so that's really nice. And I think that, um, it's, it's the best certification depending on what, you know, specifically in certain areas, the, it, the CMA is the best certification that you can get. So for me, for instance, I've worked in corporate finance, for a while, and I just don't think there is a better certification for co corporate finance than the CMA. And I say that having worked with, you know, CPAs, uh, CFAs. I've worked with MBAs, even though that's not a certification. Um, but there just isn't one that's better that's going to better prepare you for working in that particular area. Also, if you're working in like a manufacturing environment, manufacturing environment, or a plant, something like that. I don't think there's anything you can get better than 
a CMA. So and there's probably some other areas out there that it's really the best for, but I know those two particularly, it really is. Um, like I said before, it's becoming well, well, more well-known and well-respected. I know when I first started working on the program, I was really just seeing it in big companies. Um, like I remember seeing it in Amazon's job descriptions uh, and some other Fortune 500 companies, but I wasn't really seeing it a whole lot of other places. And today, when I look at roles, I see the CMA a lot more. You know, it's like everywhere now. And I think you're going to see that uh, trend continue even more so because what's happened is holders have gotten out there and uh, companies have realized like, hey, these guys really know what they're talking about. They're adding a lot of value. Um, and so they want, you know, more and more the, the CMA is becoming in demand. One interesting thing that I saw recently was... Uh, you know, used to when I looked at the salaries versus the CPA, because it's often it's often really compared to the CPA, I would notice that the CPA on average was uh, the salary was a little bit higher for the CPA. In recent years, I've seen the CMA be um, have a higher average salary in, in some uh, you know publishings that I've seen. So that's been a really interesting change. And I think that, again, speaks to, you know, the CMA is an extremely um, it's, it's just much more, uh, uh, appropriate certification, if you will. Um, particularly, like I said, in, in corporate finance or something like that. And I think that's a part of that, uh, people are becoming aware of that. And I think that's a part of the, some of those changes, as I mentioned before, um, salaries are high and you also, you have a sense of job security. So it's not just like you have a, um, you know, a, a strong salary, but, you know, even if you need to go and work somewhere else, whether it's a different company or a different industry entirely, um, you're still just able to, um, you know, maintain a relatively high salary. Um, and uh, like I said before, I like to really brag on the IMA. They do a great job of supporting their members and making sure that you're always uh, as best they can up to date on what's, what's coming down the pipe. Um, you know, they really want you to be as productive and the best, you know, possible contributor that you can. Uh, and they do that in everything. They, they, they demonstrate that in everything they do. So I really like uh, the fact that you've got that support behind you. Um, this is a really big one. I'm not sure how meaningful it is going to be to everybody, but it's a global certification. Like you can go a lot of different places with the CMA and you don't necessarily have to go and get anything else. And this is something that you may not think is that big of a deal, but I've seen people that get certifications. Like I work with some folks that were pay, um, expatriates um, in the U.S. from the U.K., for instance, and they had some certification over there. And sometimes companies here will acknowledge those certifications, um, but sometimes they they don't get as much knowledge uh, acknowledgement and that sort of thing. So um, the CMA, you know, that, and that's and that's just a limitation of not being sort of a globally recognized certification. The CMA is a global. A globally recognized certification. So if you did decide to travel or go somewhere, the CMA would be uh, something that would be recognized in, in other places. So that's really nice. This last one may not seem like it's really a big benefit, but it really is in my opinion. And that's a CPE is required. Um, I think right now you've got to get like 30 hours a year. Uh, I, sh I should know because I've been doing it every year for the last five years, but um it's, uh, yeah, it, it, you're forced to commit to continuous learning. And like I say, you may not think that's a good, a good thing, but it really is a very good thing because I think we should do that as humans, not just as CMAs, but, uh, it lets, it lets the, uh, you know, employer, um, employers out there know that, Hey, these folks, these guys are up on what they need to be up on. You know, they're, they're, uh, staying up to date and they're constantly sharpening their skill set. So that's actually a really good thing for your marketability. So I really, I really do appreciate, um, that piece of it. Um, so the next thing we'll talk about are, are um, are there alternatives? I, I've mentioned this a little bit, but, uh, the three I'm going to cover are the, really the big three that I see kind of compared to the CMA. I see people, um, you know, I've, I've specifically had conversations with people about, and that's the CPA, the CFA and the MBA. Of course, there are other alternatives. Uh, you know, they're in some way an alternative, um, there's other certifications out there that kind of fit that, but these are the big ones, like I said. So the reason, um, the, the thing about the CPA is when you get ready to compare it to the CMA is if you're going into public accounting, 
then I wouldn't even really consider the CMA, honestly. You know, it may be down the road if you're going to be a leader or something like that. Um, and you're going to be doing more operational um, finance within the business in just in a public accounting firm or something like that, then it might make sense. But generally, if you're going to be in public accounting and you're going to be doing tax and audit or something like that, or even if you're working in you know a corporation, you're in a tax department or internal audit or something like that, um, then the CPA would probably be much more appropriate. And it's really the gold standard for, for those. Um, the CFA uh, is... Uh, yeah, when you get ready to compare the CFA to the, to the CMA, the CFA is really, it, it does have a corporate finance um, emphasis. And uh, I should say I have been through uh, the CFA level one um, exam. And the a lot of the emphasis within the CFA program in its entirety is on investments and portfolio management and that sort of thing. So it's much more of an appropriate um, certification if you're going to go into, you know, sort of that direction, not to say that it, it can't be useful in corporate finance and it does have a corporate finance section and emphasis, but I just think the CMA is, is better. Uh, it has an edge on the CFA, a significant edge in the corporate finance world and, and, in a lot of other places, like specifically if you're going to go do manufacturing or something like that, definitely the CMA is a better, a better route to go than the CFA. Um, as far as the MBA, I would definitely say the first two, the CPA and CFA are better alternatives. Um, you know, they're, they better compare to the CMA than the MBA. Me being an MBA holder, the thing I'll say about an MBA is that an MBA is very broad, great credential to have. Um, but when you get ready to start talking about doing something in finance, particularly, like I said, for me being in corporate finance, um, the CPA and CFA are better than the MBA in a corporate finance setting. But the CMA is definitely far, far superior. Um, and it just really, you know, it depends on what your long-term goals down the road are. Um, you could get these these as a combination uh, to sort of supplement that sort of thing. But in terms of you're trying to choose, it just depends on where, on which direction you're going, where you're going to end up. Um, so anyway, uh, that's my thoughts on that. The next thing we'll talk about are the steps to become a a CMA, and this is coming directly from the IMA's website. So the first thing you want to do is go and join the IMA. You have to be a, a member to uh, to enroll in the CMA program and sit for the CMA exams. When you get ready to register for the CMA exams, you can register uh, for um, the exams in any order. I did it. I did it. Um, you know, part one, part two. But I've heard of people doing part two first, and it really doesn't matter. Um, and then the last thing you have to do after you pass the exam, just make sure you, you meet the education and work experience requirements, which I'll cover that a little bit on the next slide, but essentially you're going to need a bachelor's degree in any field <coughs> and you're going to need uh, two years of work of relevant work experience and, or the equivalent. And they, they, we'll go into that a little bit more in the next slide, but in terms of the total cost, this is coming from Glimes website, uh, the total CMA designation cost. If you're a professional like I was when I pursued it, it's, it's going to cost you around $1,500 um, when you consider the membership fee, the registration, entrance, and exam costs. And that does not include what you're going to pay for a test prep provider. Now, when I when I got when I did it, I just bought uh, the bare minimum, I would say, of Glimes um, test prep offerings, and it was about 500. It was at that time it was about $400 per exam. Now it's gone up about a hundred dollars, um, per exam. So, um, so about $200 more now in the last five years, uh, costs, costs going up just like everything else. <laughs> um, but your total all in costs, they say should be around between 2,500 and $3,000. And I'll drop links to all this in the, uh, in the, uh, description below. So you should be able to get to get to this stuff if you guys want to see it. Um, Again, as far as the experience requirements and the education requirements, you're going to need two years of full-time experience. I just had two years of full-time working experience, basically uh, being a financial analyst and accounting analyst. So that's kind of how I did it. But um, you can do part-time. You could be a you could be teaching, and this stuff will qualify. Um, like for instance, if you're doing part-time, then you basically need about twice the. A real time so you you know if you're doing 20 hours per week per week 
um, you would essentially need four years of experience, um, that sort of thing. But again, I'll drop the link to the IMA if there's if there's anything that's changed on this. This has um, been a while back since I uh, got this information together, but you can go to their website and kind of see if anything's changed. But you'll need to you know send all this stuff into the IMA to get it verified. I remember going through the, the um, education verification. Uh, you know, side of it and had to get my school to send my transcripts, I think to the IMA. And then on the education side, I basically had to get my employer to, employer to sign off on, Hey, Ryan actually did do this for us for, uh, you know, this amount of time. So it's not too difficult of a process. Uh, the next thing we will talk about are the study tips. And I go into this more in detail in my other video, but I think, um, this will be really helpful for you too here. So the first thing I'll say is I, I went a really silly, stupid route when I first decided to start studying for the CMA and thought I could just go the cheap route and put together, um, you know, just little stuff I found on the internet and hopefully pass this thing. It just is not going to work. You're going to need to buy some sort of study software. In my opinion, I used Glime. You don't necessarily, you know, I'm not necessarily recommending Glime. I thought it was great. Um, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of test prep providers out there. Um, I think Wiley has one. And I think I had a friend that used Wiley. There's a Kaplan Swayzer. Um, there's a guy in recent years that I don't really, I didn't use anything of his, but I, I know he's helped a lot of people. And it's, I think it's called the CMA Academy. Um, I will drop a link to all this stuff in the, in the description. So you can go down and check out, just, just pick the one that really feels right for you. I know back when I was doing it, cost was a real consideration for me. And that's kind of the reason I initially went for the cheap route, but, uh, guys, you just, you, you don't be cheap on this. Just go ahead and knock it out the first time and, and be done with it. It's so worth it down the road. Um, the next thing I'll say is make sure you have a study plan and number two, stick to that study plan. You know, you can draw a plan, but if you don't execute it, it's, it's worthless. And you really got to stick to it or you're not going to pass this thing. Uh, you make sure you want to make sure you leave significant time to review. I personally left a week for each section and, um, you know, went back and reviewed everything, went over questions. The thing is you'll forget stuff like you, you, you may get stuff down, um, you know, and then not, not look at it for five or six weeks. And then you run up on a question and you kind of know it, but you don't know it nearly as, as good as you did before. And you can't uh, complete the problem nearly as quickly. So you really need to make sure you do um, a week of, of review. Uh, and I'll say that, you know, if you're familiar in certain areas, which I know I was from other education, you know, undergrad or whatever it is, uh, study those areas last because, you know, you don't really need to spend as much time on those. Um, also make sure that as you're studying, make sure that you're seeking to understand the concepts and don't just try to memorize things, right? Don't try to memorize formulas or whatever it is. Make sure you really kind of understand the why behind things because it'll really help you out um, on the exam. If you can afford to, um, purchase yourself some supplementary materials. One of the big things that was really helpful for me was I bought these audio recordings from Glime that I would use to listen to uh, in my car as I drove to work. And at that time, you know, I was driving at least an hour each way every day. So I was spending, you know, eight to 10 hours at minimum in the car every week. Um, so I was getting a lot of time listening to uh, audio uh, from Glime, which was extremely helpful and in, in, uh, particularly in driving some of the concepts home. And the last thing I'll say is use your free resources, which is YouTube. For me, oh my gosh, YouTube taught me uh, so much for the CMA and honestly so much everywhere else. But uh, make sure you use it. One of the big ones I used was a channel called Ed Spira. Um, funny enough, in the last in the last video that I'm actually doing this remake for, I, I thought the guy's name was Ed Spira, but it's his channel. And I will uh, I will drop the link to his channel in in the description. Use that uh, because he has got so many great videos out there that you know if you can't kind of figure it out from what's in whatever your test prep provider is. You know, sometimes it just takes somebody else teaching you that same topic in a different way and you'll get it right. That, that was kind of, uh, what helped me just somebody taking a different angle to teaching it or learning it from somebody else's teaching style. And that Ed Spirit channel was huge for me. I don't, I'm not sure I could have passed without, um, without listening to some of the videos that that guy makes. So again, I'll drop that in the description. Um, the last thing I'll talk about is my exam experience. I go more, I'll go more into detail 
uh, on in the other video that I made. I'm not going to go as in depth in this video, but I will briefly go over it. Um, and hopefully, you know, maybe if you haven't taken the exam, it'll, it'll help you out a little bit. But I'll first of all, I'll say the exam one was more difficult for me. And I kind of heard that same report from a lot of other people. Um, and then exam two, I just I enjoyed the concepts more and it was it was easier for me. Um, one of the things I think I may have shown in the previous video, I can't remember, but exam the exam one Glime book um was thicker so it just kind of seemed like there was more material on it as well than there was on exam two um, it was like significantly diff uh, thicker you could kind of see the difference and so i'm not sure if that was a part of it as well another thing that i experienced was i felt like on exam two um that there were some t uh, concepts that were covered more heavily in exam one in the uh, test prep provider and um it was almost like that exam two, you needed to take exam two after exam one. Now I know that's not necessarily true because the IMA lets you, you know, sort of schedule these in any order you want. But, um, uh, you know, take that how you will. I just thought I remember that. I can't point out any specific examples. I will say both exams were very difficult for me. I, I remember exam one was so hard. I walked out and I just wanted to take a nap because I was, I was completely taxed. Um, and so... Yeah, it's it's a it's a pretty it's a pretty tough experience, but so worth it. Like I said, I use Glime. Um, make sure that whatever you do, you go through as many practice questions as you can. I know Glime's got a huge uh, practice test bank, and that thing was critical for me. You know, if you don't do anything else, make sure you work as many problems as you can. I can't remember how many problems I said I worked. I I, I say it in the other video, but it felt like thousands of problems that I went through. Um, and I don't think I could have passed if I hadn't gone through like all the problems that they offered or something like that. So another big one is time management. Um, I went through all the questions like a couple times. I've heard of people saying they don't get through all the multiple choice questions, which I think there's like a hundred. I really don't think that should happen to you. Um, one tip I will give you really quickly that I did was in these exams, they have something called a mark feature. Where basically, if you don't know the question, you or you're if you're not sure about the question, you can mark it and come back to it for later. So essentially, my strategy was, I went through the questions, the first hundred questions, um, and if I, I knew a question in the first, you know, 10, 20 seconds, I would go ahead and answer it, um, and then I would move on. But if I didn't know it, I would just mark it and come back to it later. And I think one of the things people get. Uh, really tripped up on is they'll try to go ahead and answer every question the first time they see it, which I think is a really um, poor way to approach passing these exams. Um, you know, again, you will not pass if you do not have a study plan. You don't stick to it and you don't commit to study. You just won't. So don't even try it. Don't waste your money. Don't waste your time. Don't let yourself down. Um, I think I say this in the other video, but this is really a test of your commitment and it's not really a test of your, of your intelligence. In my opinion, if you put in the time, um, and you just keep coming back to this thing over and over and, until you get it and you've just made up your mind that you're going to get the CMA, uh, then you will get it. And that's just what it is. But if you don't, then you won't. Um, so you really have to have that mindset and, and commit to it. Um, you know, and don't let things distract you. And the last thing I'll say is that, uh, you know, after you pass um, the exam or after you take the exam, um, you know, there's six weeks before you get your scores. OK, so one thing I'll say before I go on with that is there's from what I remember when I took it and this could have changed, but there were 100 multiple choice questions and then you have an essay section. And, as, and if you got through a sufficient number, if you got a sufficient number of the, the multiple choice questions correct, then they would let you go on to the essay section. But it didn't necessarily mean you'd pass the exam. Um, you know, it just meant that you'd pass enough of the multiple choice questions to get to the essay section, if that makes sense. Um, and so that said, you know, you when you leave the test facility, you don't know if you've passed or not. And that six weeks of waiting for your scores is like one is going to be like the longest six weeks of your life. And I know for me, it was pretty anxiety provoking. But the day I got my email saying, hey, you passed the exam, I cannot tell you uh, how excited I was. I was ecstatic. 
and that was pretty much for both exams. Now on the second one, I had a much more a stronger feeling that I had performed better on it, and I actually did get a significantly higher score on the second one. Um, so it wasn't as great, but the only the only feeling that's better is when they send you that certification in that uh, cardboard mailer. It's just a great feeling. Um, so anyway, I hope this was helpful for you guys. If you enjoyed this, please like this and uh, also subscribe. And I'll try to continue to put out, um, you know, helpful content. Um, and guys, just let me know if you have any questions or anything like that. And I'll do my best to help you. Uh, if you need anything cleared up, drop it in the comments below. Until next time, I will see you guys later.